Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the Live Inspired Podcast, Monday Morning Moments with John O'Leary. We record these so that you and I can begin our days and our weeks in awe and on fire with a burst of inspiration. I've got an unusual question to kick us off this week. Are you ready for it? Do you have ugly feet? I'm going to ask it again. I want to make sure you have an answer ready for me. Do you have ugly feet? Let's step into this week's episode. What if the very thing we worry about making us somehow unattractive or unworthy is in reality the very thing that makes us most beautiful and most lovable? In a marketplace that celebrates physical perfection and individual accomplishment, one of the last lessons taught by Mother Teresa reminds us what matters most. In Mother Teresa's last visit to the United States, Bill McKendry was tasked with interviewing her and capturing video of the visit. Bill had previously created ad campaigns for some of the largest brands in the world. Partnering with Taco Bell and IBM and Dodge, he worked with some of the finest, brightest, and most polished executives from around the world. Yet the most remarkable person he ever met was 86 years old and shuffled into the boardroom wearing sandals. Five decades earlier, Mother Teresa had founded the Missionaries of Charity to Serve the Poor. She had no global board of advisors to guide the strategy. She had no sophisticated process to design the mission or the branding or the vision for the organization. And she had no personal desire to become a world-renowned humanitarian or Nobel Prize winner. Instead, She simply saw the abject poverty around her and felt called to faithfully make a difference where she could. By the time Bill met Mother Teresa, more than 4,000 nuns were working with her, impacting the poor in more than 100 countries. She sought out the outcast and the shunned. She sheltered and she fed the most in need. She offered love and hope to those most in despair. As she walked into the room for the interview, Bill was surprised first by how frail she was. 86 years of living and more than five decades of wandering the back alleys in Calcutta, serving the poor while dealing with innumerable health challenges. Health challenges that included two major heart attacks, repeated heart ailments, malaria, pneumonia, Broken bones from a recent fall, among other challenges, had clearly taken their toll. But it wasn't her frailness he remembered most. It was her feet. Wearing sandals into their conversation, he was startled at how tremendously deformed, calloused, and warped her feet were. With toes that were twisted, with nails that were missing, and with bruises everywhere. Bill felt they were by far the ugliest feet he'd ever seen. He also knew they were the most beautiful feet he'd ever seen. They were the feet of someone who lived life passionately in service to others. They were the feet of someone who did not take the easy path or make life solely about themselves. They were the feet of a woman who had every reason in the world to retire, to not travel, to finally relax but with failing health, travel to the United States to raise awareness and to raise money for the neediest in the world. They were, in other words, the feet of a living saint. My friends, each day in our social media feeds, our print advertisements, our television commercials, we are shown pictures of what beauty is supposed to look like. The glitz of our Hollywood stars, the swagger of our professional athletes, The abrasiveness of our political leaders and the cunning of our corporate tycoons reveals what it looks like to become truly successful and entirely worthy. And we are reminded, when we are honest about it, that we're not enough, that we never will be, that we don't stack up to those individuals. And then into the room walks the countercultural example of Mother Teresa. She reminds us that real beauty emanates not from outer cosmetics, but from our inner heart. She shows that real joy radiates not from what we receive for ourselves, but in serving others well. She models that the best of life is found not in selfless passivity, 
but in intentionally living for a cause far greater than ourselves. And she reminds us that sometimes the things in life we feel are most ugly, most broken, and most unusable can in fact be used to change the world, starting with our own. My name is John O'Leary. This is your day, my friends. Live inspired.